Hey, it's Mr. Campbell, and uh, we're looking at the project that we've done, the uh, an mo Poetry in Motion project. And uh, depending on what class you're in, what period, we had different poems to work with. So third period worked on a question by Robert Frost. And as you can see here, I've got a bunch of different compositions in my composition window. And uh, this one's called Title Author. And this composition only contains the title author parts of the animation. So if I zoom in on this, I can scroll through it and see how that looks. And I'm pretty happy with that. I like the way it looks. And I do the same thing with each part of my project. So I have a composition for title author. I have one for line one, line two, line three, line four. And finally, I have the one for credits. So each section got its own um, composition because I wanted to just simplify how much you had to do in a single timeline. And I also wanted to teach you how to use a master composition to embed all these pieces into. So uh, as you can see with this one, I've got these all put in place. Why don't we show you how that fits in all in together in one piece. So I'm just going to delete all these and start fresh. So this, again, is my master composition. And it starts off with my title author. Now I made this with the length in mind, so I went through and I added up all the different uh, composition lengths. Okay, so the duration is right here. So I added up all those lengths until I got uh, the master size and I did the math and I figured out how long the master composition should be. So then I put this one in place. Now these are both lined up, which is not what I want. I want this one to show up after the author title, so I just slide it down. Piece of cake, Jake. Drag that one down. Line three, line four, oops, I dragged and clicked. Sometimes it does that. And then finally, I'm going to put the credits at the end. Okay? So if you want to, you can kind of zoom in on this. or zoom, I guess that's zooming out. And I put these in place in order. So they should just kind of stair step down like this. And there's that. Okay, so now my poem animates its way through. I want to add one more thing just to make it a little bit more interesting. And let me just pop this over just a smidge because what I want is a little bit of gap at the beginning and at the end. And I'm going to put something behind it. So I'm going to go right click, new, uh, solid. Okay. And the new solid is going to give me the dialog box. It wants to know what color. You know what? For what I'm doing, it doesn't matter what color I use. It's going to make up its own thing. So I got this thing in place. Now it shows up on top of my animation and now I can't see any of my text. Bums me out. Let me slide this to the bottom by clicking and dragging it down. And now that's behind, which looks, you know, the, the, I guess the colors work together. What I'm really after here is I want to go to my effects and presets window. And if I choose animation presets and backgrounds, there's a whole bunch of very groovy cool stuff I can add in here. Uh, the one I've been using lately is, yeah, let's see if I can remember what it's called. It was clouds. Is it called clouds? I can't remember. I like clouds. I like, okay, I'm going to try smoke rising on this one. So if I drag that down and I put it right on top of the composition in the timeline. Now you can add it. Oops. You can add it onto this, but you'll want to make sure you apply it to the right place because it did not apply where I wanted it. That applied it to, uh, wow, that just would it out completely. So I want to apply that to the composition or not to the composition, to the solid layer. So now I've got this animation behind my work, which looks kind of cool. Now, if you do make the mistake, and you might like some of the results, you might make uh, the mistake of adding some of that stuff to one of the other compositions. And as you can see, it makes it a little bit less legible, but it adds some sort of inner qualities to it that we didn't have before. So looking at this window here, um, it sort of changed the look of that. But you didn't necessarily plan on this. So keep it simple. And we got this. Now, let's figure out how to export this so we can turn it in. Okay, so now that we've figured out how to assemble all of our compositions into one piece and add some nice background animation to it, our next job is to figure out how do we export this in a playable format that we can both view locally on our computers as well as uh, upload to uh, Edmodo. And the Edmodo size limit for um, files is about 100 megabytes and video really jumps and goes crazy and makes makes large size files. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a small size file which means we're going to reduce this from its original 
original size. So we're going to first go up to the composition window and make sure that first that you're in the composition that you want to export. Not one of the smaller ones, but you want to do your masterpiece that shows all the work that you did in your masterpiece here, right? So I'm going to take this and choose composition, add to render queue, and it's going to open up a new tab down here where my uh, timeline was. Is my timeline still there? Yes, it is. Let's go back to the render queue tab. And as you can see, I've already had a couple of attempts at this today. And what we need to do is first choose a format and uh, give it a name and put it someplace where we know where it is. So you might want to make sure you save this back to your individual folder. Um, so save it to there and make sure you give it a name that's unique to your project. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to call this Frost. And it's a good idea if you use your ID number on here. And so put that in there. And next, we need to f work with uh, the file format. So instead of AVI, we're going to use MPEG-2. Now, the MPEG-2 format's really high quality, but it's going to come out at a pretty sizable piece. A lot of students have tried this already to upload it, and it hasn't worked out. So next, you're going to go to this part right here where it says Render Settings. And you can click that to open it, or you can just click the button here, and you'll get this window. We're going to reduce the resolution from the full size 720 by 480 down to like half or even a third. Okay, so try it a third and then you're going to click OK. So now you've got the thing all set up to go and it's not moving. That's because you have to push the render button over. Just click on the render button, click there, and as you can see it's starting to crank through it. It's viewing it through there so you can watch it rendering the piece out and this will take maybe a couple minutes depending on your composition and on the, the work that you've done. So we're going to stand by while this renders. So as you can see, it's wrapping up. It's going to make a little ding. Wow, that was loud. So it cranks out that noise when you're done. And now we get to see how it came out. So now we're going to click on uh, where I saved this at. So I'm looking at my desktop. Don't save yours to your desktop because the student computers wind up deleting everything on the desktop. Uh, so I'm going to flip this around. I think I call it Frost something there it is this is the one i did more recently i want to make sure it plays on my computer which has been kind of variable now this one came in at a very small window okay but this is now of a size how big is it uh it is eight megabytes just under eight megabytes 7.6 megabytes so the thing plays okay uh if you try to full screen it, it's going to come in a little bit fuzzy but it still looks okay okay so now i've got the thing that works and you can now upload this to Edmodo and turn it in for credit. All right, that's it. Have fun.